guys, it's Mia here and welcome back once again. And today I wanted to talk about A Heart So Fierce and Broken, the second book in the Curse Breaker series and sequel to A Heart So Fierce and Broken. Er, my bad, A Curse So Dark and Lonely. So before I get into the complaints I have about this book, let me just talk about the stuff that I did like. Now, Grey being one of my favorite characters from the first book, I was really happy that we got to spend more time in his point of view to get to see more of what he thinks and why he is so good at shutting down his emotions. I mean, I know when you're in the Royal Guard, you have to be unsusceptible to like torture or willing to do stuff you wouldn't normally want to do because you are ordered by your king or your queen to do so. Then there's also the fact that I know that a lot of people seem to complain about this book and believe me, I get why, but I honestly don't think, I honestly don't think that it is as bad as people are saying it is because I thought it was still a pretty good book. I honestly think it's a five star, well maybe a four star book in my opinion. And now here comes the complaining. So we start off in Harper's perspective, which I wasn't surprised about since the whole other book was in Rin and her perspective. So it's like cool, we're still in Harper's perspective. But no! The rest of the book switches to Grey's perspective, which again I was okay with because Grey was one of my favorite characters in this book. But then we get to the perspective of the princess of the rival kingdom that has been threatening to go to war with the kingdom of Emberfall since this entire series started. And I'm just going to say right now I called it, I called it in my, um, review of the last one, that she was not dead. I called it, I called it 100%. I, I knew it from the get-go, she was not really dead. But, now, at first, because I was upset that it is barely in Harper and Rin's perspectives, I was kind of mad at Leah Mara, or I'm just gonna call her Leah, because it's kind of annoying to have to say two different names all the time, but Leah is the princess of Silvermoon, the kingdom to, the rival kingdom to Emberfall, and we get to see her perspective, and she is the oldest daughter of the queen of Silvermoon, but she is not the heir to the throne. Her younger sister is, because according to their mother, you have to be ruthless, cold, and a killer at a moment's notice in order to be a good queen. Because if you're not strong or willing to kill on a dime, then people will not see you as a strong leader. Which is totally insane to me. And I get that when you're a female trying to rule, at least in this time where they these books were set, it's harder for you to keep power because they don't see you as a strong person. But that doesn't make it okay to just go around killing innocent people for no reason other than you find them a threat to you even though they did nothing wrong. So I'm just gonna say right now that I have never read a book before where I hated almost every single character. I hated every single one just about. I hated that the main draw for me in book one, which was Harper because I relate to her more than any other character I've ever read, was relegated to nothing more than a not even side character. She was just a mention character. We got her perspective first and then we never saw her again except in like not even 30 seconds in one little scene throughout the rest of the book. And I'm like, why? Why did you do that? Like we read the whole book caring about this character in her situation. Now she's no more. 
than an extra. She's not even a side character. She's more an extra in this book. And the one character that I started out hating, which was Leah Mara, mainly because she took the place of Harper's perspective, I ended up liking her character, and she was about the only one I ended up liking. Let me tell you why. First off, Ren, I barely liked him in the first book to begin with. He barely got me to like him. Like, he was walking a razor's edge with his attitude in the first book. Yeah, I get it. He's trapped by this curse. He's been stuck in it for 300 years. But that doesn't give him the right to be even more of a monster now than he was when he was actually a monster. He is worse off now as a human. And I get that he's afraid of a sorcerer. I get that he's afraid to be stuck in this limbo again. I get that he's afraid to be turned back into this monster. But he is ten times worse than when he actually was a monster because of his fear. And because he finds out that the true heir to the throne is not only alive, but is a mage or a magician or whatever you want to call it, a sorcerer, whatever, he goes on this tirade sending all of his royal guard, his soldiers, to the kingdom, throughout the kingdom, in order to track down the heir to the throne. Meanwhile, he was best friends with him for like 300 years. Anyway, and so he tells people that if they turn in anyone with magic, without any proof even, they will be rewarded for their efforts. So naturally, a lot of false claims come in to claim the gold. And Rin doesn't even care that they might not be true. He's just like, okay, you're suspected of magic? Dead you are. And then, ooh, and his attitude towards Grey. When he was trapped just as much as Rin in this curse, if not more so because he had to watch Rin suffer, he had to be his servant, he had to be his, like, decoy for the monster and put up with all of Rin's bullshit he even still even after 300 years of being stuck in this situation treats Grey like a pile of shit like he's nothing to him and I'm like if I were Harper right now I would hug you with a dagger to the heart like I'm just, mm, why didn't she do anything because at this point all Rin has done is hide away in his castle, be a dickhead, and freaking get innocent people killed just for being suspected of having powers. I get that he's afraid, but that is hella not okay. That is nowhere near okay. And then there's Grey. He is, at one point he's in this tavern, or bar and he's there with a little boy and he had changed his name and moved out of the walls of the kingdom in order to get away from Rin because he doesn't want the throne he doesn't want to be a threat to Rin that is the main reason why he left because he found out in the end of the last one that he was the heir to the throne and he left to not threaten Rin's power but does Rin care about that no he just wants answers. So, as they're in this tavern, the royal guards come in. Rin's royal guards come in. And they outright shove a sword through this poor, innocent old man's chest just for being told he has magic. Right in front of Grey. And I'm like, four words could have saved this man's life. I am the true Heir. Five words, actually. I'm the true heir. That is all Grey had to say to save this man's life. To save multiple people's lives. But does he say it? No! He's like, I just don't want to threaten Rin's power, so I'm going to stay hidden away. What? 
You're letting innocent people die because you don't want to threaten Rin's power? Just freaking tell him you don't want the throne. Tell him, I'm the true heir, but I don't want the throne. You can keep it. You are allowed to do that. But no, he just lets t so many innocent people die. <sighs> and then there is Leah Mara's mother. Who dear. This woman is... Sh she is insane. She... The... <laughs> First off, she kills innocent people just to stay hidden from Emberfall. Second off, she is a manipulative bitch who... And she tortures her own daughter, her, her, her one that's supposed to be the true heir, but wasn't hard-hearted enough in order to be the heir. So, there is one point she even tells Grey to freaking kill her with his powers to prove how strong he is in his abilities. And I'm like, bitch, she's your daughter and you're willing to sacrifice her for a little bit more power? Are you fucking insane? Just, I don't get any of the characters in this freaking story. And Harper even. Harper is a hypocrite. She could have ended this, like I said, one hug with a dagger to the heart, and he's dead. Would it be a betrayal to his love? To her love, whatever? Yes, it would be. But at that point, she would have saved so many lives. And I think it would have been worth it. But she stays with him! Ugh! Why is everybody in this book such a stupid freaking... Mm, I just... I... I can't. Literally, the character that I started out hating is the one that I liked the most at the end. Leo Mara is so misunderstood, and I was nearly in tears thinking that Grey was actually going to go through with killing her. I'm like, there is no way he's actually going to stand there and do this to her just because the queen of a rival kingdom wished it to be so. Huh. <sighs> But yeah, did I think this book was as bad as everyone was saying? No. I really enjoyed the story. Was I a little upset that Harper wasn't in it more and that Rin wasn't in it more? Yes, I was. But I really liked seeing Grey's perspective and I still very much enjoyed the story even though I wanted to basically wring every character's neck. I just wanted to jump into the story and like strangle every character and be like, what are you doing? But yes, it was a four out of five for me just because Harper was not in it more. And she was the main reason I fell in love with the series to begin with because her story was so relatable to me. Not the kidnapping and being trapped in a cursed land part, but her having cerebral palsy and stuff like that. But this book is definitely worth a read, and I would not let people's negative opinions pull you on that book. But also, I would just form your own opinion, because as many people were talking negative about this book, I still read it. I still enjoy it. I read and watch shows to form my own opinion. Read books and watch shows to form my own opinion, not to let other people's opinions sway me. Because somebody might not like something, but then I ended up loving it. So, that's my thoughts on A Heart So Fierce and Broken, and I cannot wait for when the sequel is announced, because there's got to be more to the story, because if, if not, it's a heck of a cliffhanger to leave you on. So, as always, I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you guys enjoy your reading. Bye, guys!